This week, a special edition from Santon City, one of South Africa's biggest shopping malls. As we look at consumer behavior, we're going to talk to three experts who will give us their views on how we make purchase decisions. It really is the holy grail as far as brand managers are concerned. A very warm welcome to Mags on Media. First up this week, listen to this statement. Love matters less than logistics in the battle for South Africa's grocery shoppers. ShopRite's dominance in the grocery market looks set to continue for the foreseeable future, according to brand new research. We're joined now by Neil Higgs from the research company TNS Global. So, Neil, the survey is all about price and logistics. Yes. What are you trying to say in the survey? Well, what we looked at was people's attraction to the various chains in their mind, the power in the mind. But what we also found was that a lot of brands, their power in the market is very different from their power in the mind. And that difference is either due to barriers or attractors. In the case of ShopRite, they've got a huge footprint. So convenience, logistics, as you said, is a very, very big component, as is price. Those are the two key things that drive this particular market, the grocery market. When you talk about power in the mind, what does that mean? That essentially is the actual attraction of the brand as a result of marketing and positioning. So what we found, for example, is that Woolworths, uh, Pick and Pay, and uh, Food Lovers Market yeah. have somewhat higher power in the mind. People would like to go to them if they could, but they can't, either because the outlets aren't conveniently spaced, or there aren't very many of them, or in fact they've got price perceptions which are a barrier. All right, now a brand like ShopRite, or for that matter, Checkers Hyper, which is part of the same group, what is it doing on the floor that is making it attractive to consumers as opposed to the other brands that you've just mentioned? Uh, very often it'll be affordability. Well, you, you've got essentially two things that are ruling the roost completely in the grocery market. It's affordability um, and particularly specials and location. Location is a very big part of the ShopRite's success and that's why its success is not going to go away anytime quickly. People will be going there even though they'd potentially rather go somewhere else simply because it's affordable. Um, the, the actual layout of the store has an attraction for people, they can find stuff, they're familiar with it, um, and of course the footprint. So what you're also saying is if the price isn't right and the store is badly located, uh, a brand like ShopRite wouldn't be performing? Yes, they've got attractors over and above their actual brand positioning. Mm. And because they are so big, I think they've got something like 1,500 stores, yeah. that's not going to go away anytime quickly. So what about empathy for the customers in other ways then? That doesn't make any difference. Well, it does. Uh, it, normally, if you had lower brand loyalty, then you've been as warranted. If you're punching b below your weight on the brand loyalty stakes, that would be a concern. In the case of ShopRite, they do have this huge momentum. But ultimately, there is a lesson here for them. If your vegetable market type places, your woolies, your pick and pays, start to open up more stores, they're going to pull people away from your ShopRite chains. Am I correct in saying that you're also detecting a demand out there, I think you say, for alternatives? Smaller players can meet that demand and make significant gains. You've just addressed that point. But those smaller players, they patently need to offer something different. What we're looking at here is an attraction growing amongst your smaller express type stores. So for example, the route that Woolies has gone is an example of this. They've made a big effort to become more affordable in the eyes of customers, but they've also opened a number of smaller, more express type stores. Now the food lovers markets, if they were to do a similar thing, particularly in your high traffic urban areas, the express type outlet, that would do a lot for their market share. I mean, we predict their market share could double. All these brand extensions that you're talking about can be very confusing to the consumer though. Yes, I think they have to be positioned very carefully. Um, uh, Checkers and ShopRite, I think, are a classic case because they were separate, then they kind of merged, and now they're separate again. And building that brand identity is absolutely key, and I think that's where the more consistent players have done well. When you talk about the FMCG experience like, uh, like ShopRite, Checkers, or the others, can that same logistics and price example that you're illustrating apply to other brands as well or is it specifically in this world that we're talking about today? Well I think retail is very different from other markets. Um, in the retail world uh, people are looking for that quick in and out, that fast experience. 
Although, having said that, we have also picked up in our study that pick and pay hypermarket, a big store, not a boutique at all, and places like Macro have also gained a lot of favor in the last two years, possibly as a result of the recession. So we found that the wholesale uh, experience is not as negative in people's minds as it once was. Mm -hmm. So we're getting this almost uh, polarity where some people are really preferring that all-in-one big experience because of price and convenience, but also that express boutique um, more, more frequently located store. All right, the price and logistics argument that you're putting forward to me, uh, is, do, would that apply in a different set of economic uh, circumstances? We know that uh, economies work in cycles, so let's assume that there's an uptick by 2014. Yes. Uh, would that change in 2014? Would we be more disposed to the empathetic side of a brand and less to price and logistics once things start to improve and there is more, uh, there's more money in our wallets? Funnily enough, it's almost the exact reverse. We find that in times of recession, people revert to their favorite brands. The, the, the power in the mind that our conversion model calculates shows that very clearly. Once things open up, people become more experimental. So you find repertoires expand. We've seen that in the Sunday Times top brands this year. Repertoires have expanded. People are trying more smaller outlets, but they're staying also with your macros and your hypermarkets, having probably experienced them for the first time. So we're seeing this, this um, more experimental approach to retail at the moment. While all of the stuff that Neil mentions is important, advertising does remain critical in terms of brand building. Of that, we are absolutely convinced. Behind the scenes now of a new ad for ShopRite Checkers, where internationally renowned chef Gordon Ramsay puts their butchery to the test. Yeah, let's make it a for you, okay? Flop maker, brilliant. Legendary. Well done. Amazing. I'm quite shy, so I can't do aggressive. Right, let's cook it. Lovely. Excellent. Excellent. Take it out to rest. Ooh, that just sits my eyebrows. What a boss. Who a boss? What a boss. What a boss. What a boss. Come on, one more. Boom. That's a wrap, everybody. Well done, Paul Radcliffe. Great work. Great work. Great work. Great work. What the f did you do? Well, great work, anyway. Well done, everybody. Funny enough, um, I fell in love with South Africa nearly 15 years ago, but uh, my brother-in-law is from Joburg. My life is not complete until I've run two oceans. Comrades, I've done. Green number, potentially, uh, when I've done ten. But the big one for me next year um, will be two oceans. Um, South African beef, that was a really good question. You know, everyone used to boast about the South African wine you know, 10 years ago, that it could start rivaling some of the sort of French and the Spanish wines. But now it's turned 360 because the produce coming out of South Africa, the beef, the seafood, uh, is pretty extraordinary. And uh, you know what? I'm sick to death of hot dogs in New York. Um, so, Bodobos, uh, any day. Um, as long as you let me put a little bit of daddy's sauce on it, it's like a HP sauce that we have. Uh, I've been blown away, to be honest, um, whether it's the T-bone, ribeye, or even the rump, which is one thing that's always so comforting, uh, is how good, you know, their steaks are. Um, we don't have venison all the year round in these supermarkets. We're quite sort of seasonal there because we don't have that kind of uh, demand. And venison is seen of a, a treat. It's not your everyday meat. You have a destination lamp. It's now a hallmark. It's almost like a sort of prize lamp. So um, I think you can stand in the top three in Europe quite easily.